Um, I didn't realise I needed to start with an admission, so for the record, uh, my name's Craig and I too am a northerner. Um, <laughs> Right. Um, I, I wanted to start this actually just by reflecting quickly on some of the things that were um, said earlier on in the conference, and in particular, um, just to make a couple of observations. The first, I'm, I'm really pleased that although it's not had a very high profile today uh, in many of the sessions in the debates, um, that nuclear is there in the NP11 report, and it, it's right there up in the exec summary, which I, I think is where it should be. I want to say a few words about, about nuclear, partly to set it in the context of net zero which I think you've heard a lot about today, but also in the wider global context of tackling climate change. Um, and one final observation. Uh, there was a, many mentions today about um, uh, Greta Thunberg, um, uh, um, who's, who's um, provoked quite a lot of attention and reaction in the climate change debate. Uh, my observation is, is this, is, is that one of the reasons that um, she's able to demonstrate her clean green credentials coming from Sweden is Sweden has two um, great advantages when it comes to clean power. First, it was endowed with the ability to generate a lot of hydroelectricity and secondly, it chose in the 50s to have a very significant nuclear industry which still provides around 40% of their electricity. Um, so in that context, um, just a few, a few facts and figures, um, which I'll leave you to, to read really, but my, my point here is twofold. It is one is there is a very significant amount of nuclear in the energy mix at the moment, and there's more to come. There's a lot more being built, particularly in um, certain countries. China is building a lot of reactors at the moment. Um, uh, and secondly, that, that even on today's statistics, it, it actually contributes a significant part of um, the energy mix. But importantly, if you talk about carbon-free or low-carbon energy, it's a very, very much higher percentage, and I think it will probably remain so going forward. Um, what are the drivers here? Um, further decarbonisation we've talked about. Um, people, I think, have acknowledged um, the role that nuclear can provide in steady baseload. Uh, my key point, I think, first key point, is that nuclear is not in competition with renewables. Sometimes I think there are different political and philosophical stances here. Um, I think the key message from today and from previous conferences like this is that we are going to need every tool in the toolkit to hit the targets, whether it's the 2050 net zero or the Lib Dems 2045 net zero or the Labour Party's new 2030 net zero. It feels to me there's a, a little bit of a contract for different auction going on there between the political parties at the moment. Um, let's hope it's, it's not a race to the bottom. Um, so that's the first point, I think, um, uh, uh, complementary and, and not in competition. The second point I think is a bit more subtle and it goes back to the, to the, to the baseload point, but I think nuclear can, can not just help complement renewables, but it can enable them as well. The kind of growth that we're going to need to see in offshore wind and some of the other intermittent energy sources will need to, will need to be balanced in the grid and I think nuclear could have a very important role to help, uh, help enable that kind of activity. Um, those are some of the challenges for the nuclear industry. Joe's hinted at some of them. Not just capital costs, but cost of capital, i.e. how can we persuade people um, to lend money and invest in nuclear? Value for money and competitiveness, particularly when we see the latest uh, offshore wind uh, auction rounds. Capacity and capability, which I think other people will talk about. You know, How quickly can the supply chain actually react to a, a new build programme, particularly if we start building lots and lots of small modular reactors, which you may have heard of? And, and then, in particular, public perception, which a number of speakers have already mentioned. I'm glad we've tackled the sort of glow-in-the-dark comment, but here are the, here's some sort of more evidence-based analysis about where we are on public perception in the UK. I mentioned Sweden before. Interestingly, Sweden's got a very strong, even stronger, pro-nuclear um, public perception figures. Um, it dipped a little bit, as most, most countries did, just after Fukushima, but it's rallied round, and in fact nuclear um, uh, is now a key, key component of Swedish energy policy going forward. Very briefly, because I want to try and stay to time, um, somebody else earlier on today mentioned um, 2020 being a very important year for uh, climate change and energy in the UK. Uh, we are going to host COP26, which will be in Glasgow. I think it's a really, really important opportunity. It's an opportunity um, for the whole country, but particularly for the capabilities that we've got in, in the north of England. And we will be having a, a significant presence there, both on the nuclear side and more generally as a department. And we will be working with our colleagues in DIT to support um, all and any UK businesses that want to showcase the best of UK innovation, the best of UK technology, and the best of, of UK capability in this space.
Um, very finally, um, a quick glance at what I do. This is what we this is what we call advanced nuclear technologies. Basically, it's everything between the current um, generation of power stations and and fusion. Whenever that whenever that particular um, technology challenge is, is solved. Um, uh, and very finally, people have talked about what is government doing here. Well, here are some of the enabling framework measures that we've announced in the past. We're um, limited today what we can what we can say because of Perder is a few hours away, but um, if you go onto our website, and I'll, I'll circulate the, uh, the address later, you may find that there are some very low-key additional announcements being made even as we speak. Thank you very much.